Welcome to today's R section training. My name is Sonja von Bloh. I hold the training together with my colleague Richard Hase. He will answer your questions. First, I would like to show you how to use the training interface. The settings allow you to adjust your audio settings. There's also a chat function. You can use the window at the bottom to send us questions or comments. We try to answer these questions within the training. If there are too many questions that cannot be answered today, you will definitely receive an email afterwards. The training is recorded. This will be sent to you after the training. You also get all the models used. This brings me to today's training program. I will first give you an introduction to the section program. Using several examples, I would like to show you the modeling options and design methods in the program. In the first example, the thin walled eye profile is mod modeled with graphic functions. I will model this slowly so that you can enter this cross section as well. In another example, I show you how to insert cross sections from the database and how you can add other parts to this cross section. Then I show the modeling of a massive cross section based on a DSF template. Finally, I model a hybrid cross section. Then I open our section. Our section is an independently executable program for generating any thin word or massive profile. If you want to design special profiles in RFM or Airstab that are not contained in the profile library, you can create them with our section. You can then import these user-defined profiles into RFM or Airstab. In our section, it's possible to calculate cross-section values and stresses. The R section user interface is the same like an RFM6 or RSTAB9. The cross section graphics and dialogues are displayed in the working window here in the middle. Most tasks can be performed with the mouse. In the tables here below, the keyboard is primarily used for numeric input and output of results. There are three navigators in the left pane of the working window. It's the navigator data, the navigator display, and the navigator results. The data navigator manages the input data. A double click on the corresponding entry uh, opens the dialog in which the selected object can be changed. However, it's also possible to create new objects via the navigator data. Just right click on the ob object and choose here, for example, new point, and then you can enter the point properties. The display navigator controls the graphical display in the working window. If the checkbox in front of an entry is unchecked, this object is hidden in the graphic. If I uncheck here the points, you see now the points are not displayed anymore. The results navigator controls which results are displayed. You can here switch between the results of the ordinates or the stresses, for example. Then I would like to go into the mouse function. To move the section, you can hold down the mouse wheel, move the section accordingly. You can turn the mouse wheel to zoom, right click to open the context menu. You can also select objects with the mouse. If you open a window from left to right, everything that's completely within the selection area will be selected. If you drag a window from right to left, everything that is intersected by the selection area will be selected. You can also select individual objects. To do this, left click on the objects that you want to select. If you want to add objects to the selection, hold down the control key and then left click 
on the corresponding objects. If you want to remove objects from the from the selection, then hold down the shift key and click on the objects. This brings me to the first example. To create a custom profile, or open the new model window via this button here. First, I have to enter the cross-section name. I name it example example 1. Then I have to define the analysis method. Um, we have two analysis methods available. It's a finite element analysis and the thin walled analysis. I choose here the thin walled analysis. It's also possible to calculate the effective uh, cross-section. For this, it's necessary to activate this add-on. The effective cross-section can be calculated for both analysis methods. After activating um, th this add-on, a standard must be selected according to whose rules the subpanels are to be generated and the effective cross-section is to be calculated. The following standards are currently available. It's, it's the Eurocode 3 part 1 1 and the Eurocode 3 part 1 3 for cold form cross-section and the Eurocode 9 for aluminum cross-section. I choose here the Eurocode 3 part 1 1. Then I go to the settings and options. Um, here you have the possibility to define the manufacturing type. The manufacturing type determines which part of the standard is used for the design. For uh, cold formed cross sections, the standard Eurocode 3 part 1 3 is used and for hot rolled or welded section, sections, the standard Eurocode 3 part 1 1 is used. I don't want to define here the manufacturing type, so I click on OK. Then the new file will be created. I first define the material. The material is already defined, so I double click on this uh, material to open the edit material dialog. Here in the list on the left, it's uh, possible uh, to add a new um, material. Uh, it's also possible to copy a selected material or to uh, delete a material. Um, it's uh, possible to enter the material name di directly here in, in this field. Here I enter, for example, an S235. And now our section lists all materials that match that name. But I can also open the material library via this button here for a specific selection. And the material library filters are available to me to quickly find the material. You can filter here, for example, by material name, steel, for example, and um, you can filter by a standard. There's also a search available where you can enter the material name, for example, S355. I want to use this material, but uh, here from uh, the standard Eurocode 3 part 1.1. And then I click on OK. If the material is not in the material library, I can create this material by activating here this option user defined material and in the material values tab I can then define the material properties. I want to do I don't want to do this today so I deactivate this checkbox and then I click on okay. 
I then create the elements. The definition of elements is required if the analysis method analysis of thin wall structures is selected or if the effective cross section is to be calculated. An element must always lie in an in a surface and the surface is called an R section part. Elements can be created graphically or via dialog. The graphical input is called up via the symbol in the toolbar and the input via dialog is called up via the navigator data. Here, new element, single line, for example. Um, when creating an element via the dialog box, the parts and points of the element must be created beforehand. And this is why a single line arc and so on is deactivated because we don't have created points and uh, parts and so on before. So I will use here this uh, graphical input. When creating an element via the graphical input, the part is also created. I choose here um, single and I want to use uh, the input mode length and direction. I'll enter the bottom flange here first. Uh, the bottom flange has a length of 150 millimeters and a thickness of 10.7 millimeter. You can see here a preview of the element and to create the element, I uh, choose here the desired location and then I left click uh, with my mouse. Uh, then I define the web and uh, the web, for this I reverse here the orientation and the web has an angle in the web plane about 90 degree and a length about 289.3 millimeters and a thickness of 7.1 millimeter. And then I put this web here in the middle of the first element. Then I uh, create here the upper flange. So I define an angle in the work plane of zero degree. Length is 75 millimeter. Thickness is 10.7 millimeter. And I choose here this point. Then I reverse the orientation to create the second part and then I place this here and with a right mouse click I leave uh, the window. The profile should be a ruled T profile uh, to which a lower flange is welded. Uh, I want to uh, also um, define here um, the round radius, so um, I can define lines to create this round radius, or we have also a function uh, that's called create round corner, and you find here the corresponding button in the bottom. And then you have to define the round radius. This should be 50 millimeters, and all I have to do is to click on the relevant lines. Right mouse click to leave the dialog. Um, then I want to define uh, the welds. The lower flange is welded with a six millimeter double uh, fillet weld, and I create the welds using the create angled corner function. Here you have uh, two uh, corner types. You can 
define the corner via both edges or via edges and angles and I um, choose here edge and angle. It's also possible to calculate in the dialogues. So I define here for the length 6 multiplied by square root from 2 and then I have to define the angle. It's 45 degree and click on the relevant lines. What you can now see uh, here, these are the subpanels, and um, these subpanels are automatically generated based on the standard selected in the base data. Um, if no elements are defined, a cross section classification in our section and the and in the design modules of RFMIRSTAB um, is not possible. Um, and neither a calculation of the effective cross-section is possible. In the design add-ons, this profile is then designed according to the cross-section class 3. I would also like to use this example to show you how to calculate stresses and the effective cross-section. In order to calculate stresses or the effective cross-section, a load case must first be created load combination can also be formed. So I create a load case first and I will do this via the navigator data. Here I go to load case, new load case. I name this load case N and I want to have an additional load case. So I create a new load case and I name this MY. I want to define also a load combination, so I switch to the tab uh, load combination. Here I create a new load combination and I want to assign both uh, load cases to my combination, so I add all. It's also possible here to define a factor. Then I click on OK. Then uh, I have to define the internal forces. The internal forces can be defined manually or they can be imported from Airstab or Airfem. If you want to import these internal forces from Airstab or Airfem, you can do this via the table, internal forces. And here you have this, um, function import internal forces from RFM or Airstab. I don't want to import these internal forces. I want to define them manually. So I go to the navigator data again, open internal forces, and then I club double click on internal forces for my load case number one. And here I want to define a compressive force. Um, Compressive forces are negative, tensile forces are positive, so I define minus 10 kN. Um, the axial force acts in the center of gravity of the cross section. I want to define a an, uh, an bending moment in load case number two, so I click on apply and next. Then I change my load case to MY. And here I define zero for the axial force and 100 kilonewton meter uh, for the bending moment. And then I click on OK. If we look into the navigator data, you see now here in load case number one, we have only defined an axial force about minus 10 kilonewton and for load case two, we have a uh, bending moment MY 100 kilonewton meter. The 
two uh, dots that you see now here in the graphics, graphics are the stress points. Stresses are calculated and displayed at the stress points. The stress points are generated automatically, but I can also define stress points manually. I want to define the stress points manually, so I go here to the navigator data and then I open here the stress points. These are the automatically generated stress points and I want to add a new stress point. So I choose here this option. Um, this stress point should have the number 100 and then I have to define the coordinates. I can define the coordinates manually or I can select a point in the graphics and import um, its uh, coordinates. So I want to define it manually. It's 75 millimeter and minus 100 millimeter. And then I click on OK. Now the stress point is created. Uh, we can see the stress point here in the graphics. Um, it's also uh, possible to show here the numbering. For this, I go to the navigator display. I activate here this checkbox numbering and we have here also a, ch a checkbox for the stress points. And you now see this stress point number 100. I deactivate this again. Which stresses are to be calculated and output in tabular and graphical form can be set in the stress configuration. Um, I want to show you this now. For this, I go to the navigator data and here under stresses, stress configuration, I find the stress configuration. Um, the corresponding control fields are to be activated or deactivated here. Now uh, only uh, sigma x total, tau total and uh, equivalent stress will be calculated. That's okay here in this case. So I start the calculation now. In the results uh, navigator, you can switch between the results of the gross cross section. These are the thin volt analysis results and the results of the effective uh, thin volt analysis calculation. I show here the results of the gross cross section first. Um, the same possibilities. Um, are included in the tables. Here you can switch between the results of the gross cross-section and the effective uh, cross-section. I choose here the results of the gross cross-section. Um, and it's also possible to switch between uh, the results here um, of the load cases and the load combination. I look at the load case one first and I want to see here the stresses for uh, load case number of one uh, for my axial force. It's also possible to um, change the type of display. I choose here off. And if you want to see the stresses on uh, the stress points um, that we uh, created, then you can uh, go here uh, to this uh, table, open this tab all stresses by stress points. And if you choose this stress point, then you uh, go directly here to the stress point in uh, the table. Um, it's also possible to uh, show the statical moments as y 
as Z and, and so on. Um, we have uh, the statical moments also in the table. Here are statical moments and warp warping. Mm. I want to uh, go to the effective cross-section results now. So I change here in the navigator results effective uh, thin word analysis and I want to see here the stresses for load case number one. I change this here also in the table. You see here the section uh, property um, of the um, effective cross section in comparison to the section properties of the gross cross section. The section property of the effective cross section are reduced. Um, you can see here graphically that in load case number one, the web falls into cross section class four. Local buckling occurs in a class four cross section according to the standard. The reduction in strength due to local buckling can be taken into account through effective widths. And uh, this is uh, calculated automatically here in our section. Um, you can see here the section classification also in the table. You see here, okay, classification, this cross section falls into class four. And if you click on the sub panel of the web, you see here the t details of the classification. And it's also possible to see here the effective width uh, of this um, sub-panel. Here in, if I switch to the bending moment and go here to the section classification, you can see this cross-section falls into class one, so um, no reduction has to be made. And for the combination, um, I see that uh, this cross section uh, falls also uh, in class one. I would now like to use another example to show you how you can access cross sections from the library and modify them. For this, I create a new file via this button, I call it example two. Here I choose the analysis method thin world analysis. And I want to calculate also the effective cross section. So I activate this uh, checkbox and I choose the standard Eurocode three part one one. And then I click on OK to create this file. I then define the material. This should be an S235. So I open here the material library. I type the, the material name S235 from this standard OK. And then I insert a cross section from the cross section library. To do this, I go here to the navigator data and open here the window new uh, section. The window is structured like the material window. A cross section can be created or copy via the list here, via these buttons. I can enter also here uh, the uh, cross section name, for example, IPE uh, 200. Um, 
but it's also possible to open the cross-section library via this button. A large number of profiles have already been entered into the profile library and I want to choose here a standardized uh, L profile and name is L200 150, 12. I choose here the standard, then I click on OK. The angle uh, should be mirrored around the Y axis, so I activate this checkbox and um, the angle should be also rotated about the x-axis about 90 degree. Furthermore, I select the offset point in the graphic and at this point the profile is placed at the insertion point. I pick for this this point here and then I define the insertion point. I can pick this also graphically here in the working window. And then I click on OK. When inserting this thin vault cross section, two elements are defined and one part will be uh, created. The cross-section can be subsequently edited, moved, mirrored or rotated. Um, you can open here this dialog or um, you can use here uh, this function for move copy or rotate and so on. Um, however, in order to modify individual objects such as points or lines, the cross-section must be splitted. The cross-section is to be supplemented by further cross-section parts. I therefore split the cross-section into its individual parts for further processing. To do this, I right-click on this section and then I choose here Explode. The fillet isn't needed, so I delete this. So I choose here this point and click on delete. Now um, the part is deleted too. Um, I also add uh, more elements. Uh, I insert an element with a thickness of 12 mm and a length of 200 mm and I will do this via uh, the graphical input. Here I choose single. I choose the input mode length and direction and I reverse the orientation and the length should be 200 millimeter, thickness is 12 millimeter, and then I put this element here. I uh, want to add another element uh, for the web with a thickness of uh, 10 millimeter and a length of 400 millimeter. For this, I define here an angle on the work plane. I have to reverse the orientation. Length should be 400 millimeter, thickness 10 millimeter, and I create this element on this position. I now delete unnecessary lines. I don't need this line, and I also don't need this line. And welding seams should also be taken into account. 
Um, so I create the welds uh, using the function create angle corner. Here I use the corner type edge and angle and a double fillet weld is to be defined so uh, that I define here 6 multiplied by square root of 2 with an angle of 45 degrees and I define it here on this positions. Furthermore, I still have to create the uh, part by um, selecting here this function select boundary. Here I have to choose the material and then I click on the line and now the part is created automatically. I would now like to calculate the effective cross-section and the stresses so uh, that I create a new load case. So for this I create a new load case. I call this load case M and a second load case MY. I want to create also a load combination with N plus MY and I click on OK. Then I have to define the internal forces. For this I open here the internal forces and in load case number one I create an internal force about minus 50 kN, apply a next, change the load case here, axial force should be zero and MY should be 20 kN meter. Then I click on OK. I start the calculation now. And I look at the uh, effective uh, of the result uh, of the effective cross section for load case number one. I see here a reduction on the web and in the flange. And if we look here on the section classification, you can see um, this cross section falls into class 4 for load case number 1 and uh, also uh, for load case number 2 but here only the flange uh, is reduced. We can change here also the type of uh, display to off and then we look to the classification of the load combination and also for the load combination this cross section falls into class 4. Um, I uh, want to create uh, the documentation now uh, and the documentation is um, done in the printout report and for this I go to the navigator data again and here I create then the new printout report. Uh, here I can choose the report items that uh, should be included in the printout report. I don't want to um, have here the stresses by loading and material and so on. So I click now here on save and show. Now the printout um, is created. We have here now the tables that we uh, have chosen uh, in this printout report manager. 
and it's also possible uh, to uh, print a graphic to this printout report. I want to show the, you this now. And to print this graphic to the printout report, I choose here this function, print graphics to the printout report. Um, here you have the possibility to make various uh, settings. Um, you can uh, define here the graphic printer uh, that it's a window filling. And you see here uh, this in the preview. And then I go to save and show. And now uh, this a graphic is printed uh, to the printout report. In the next example, I would like to show you that you can also create cross sections by importing a DXR file. Now I close this printout. A DXR file can be imported via menu file. Import DXF. Then I choose here the corresponding DXF file and click on open. I don't want to import this DXF file into the active model. I want to create a new model. So I click here on no. In the section create our section model, you have three options for creating the cross section. The Automatic creation of elements is useful if the outlines of the cross section are available in the DXF, as DXF file. Our section attempts to create setter lines for parallel lines and then set the elements between the intersections. Only elements that do not exceed the maximum thickness defined here in this maximum thickness field are created. The import function Use DXF template lines as center lines is useful if the cross section geometry is available as a center line model. The lines of the DXF template are considered as the center lines of the elements. The thickness defined here in this field T uh, is assigned equally to all elements. The function create DXF template is useful for massive cross sections where no elements needs to be created. In addition, this function can also be used for complex cross-sections where I only want to create elements for the decisive cross-section parts. With this import function, the lines in the DXF file are imported as lines. You can then use these lines as an aid for modeling. I use this function today, so I click here on OK. Now the lines are created. A finite element analysis is to be carried out on the imported profile. I set this in the base data. For this, I open here the base data. This is already uh, chosen. Um, a finite element analysis should be performed on massive cross sections, such as timber cross sections or concrete cross sections in con contrast to thin walled cross sections where the stresses can be regarded as constant across a cross section thickness the stress distribution in solid cross sections is variable this can only be determined with a finite element analysis so i click here on ok then i have to define the material that should be an aluminum material so i modify this material. I open the material database. I choose here the filter aluminum and uh, this should be a 60-60 aluminum material here. This material, OK, and then OK. In a finite element analysis, only a surface needs to be defined, but no elements needs to be defined. I would only have to define elements if I also want to calculate the effective cross section or carry out a classification. So I only have to create a part here and I create this part via the function 
select boundary. Then I click on the outline and the part is now created. After creating the part, I still need to, to create the openings. For this, I use this function select boundary for openings. And then I click here on the relevant line. I want to show you um, that you can also um, create openings via uh, rotating them. So I select here this opening and then I open the function rotate selected uh, objects. Here I want to create a copy. I want to create three copies. Rotation angle is 90 degree and the point of rotation is here in the middle. Then I click on OK and now uh, the openings are created. I still need an opening here in the middle. So for this, I use this function select boundary again. And now the cross section is uh, complete. I want to calculate the stresses here as well. So I create a load case, new load case, and I name this load case n plus mxp. And then I click here on OK. Then I define the internal forces for in that load case. And internal force should be uh, axial force about uh, minus 10 kilonewton and a torsional moment of 0 0.3 kilonewton meter. And I click on OK. Then I start the calculation. And now I look uh, onto the results. I want to see here the stresses uh, sigma x and here also the shear stresses. And I look here also on the stresses sigma equivalent. Um, I want to create a printout and I want to include also this graphic. So I create a printout first. I go to this navigator data. Then I right click on printout, new printout. I select here the uh, relevant items. Then I click on save and show. And I want to add this uh, result graphic to the printout report. So I choose here print graphics to the printout report. Save, show. And now this graphic is also printed to this printout report. As a last example, I show the modeling of a composite cross-section. In our section, it's also possible to model cross-sections that consist of different materials. Ideal uh, cross-section values are determined for such a cross-section. For this, I create a new file. I name it hybrid a thousand millimeter wide and 200 millimeter high concrete cross section lying on an HEB steel cross section is to be modeled. So I choose for this the analysis method finite element analysis. Then I click on OK. I define two materials. For this I open here the edit material dialog. First I define the material for the concrete part of the cross-section. I open here the material library and I search for C4050. From this standard, okay, then I, 
I need an additional material for the steel cross section. So I create a new material, open the material library, and this should be S235. Then I click on OK and OK. First, I model the concrete cross section. For this, I use a cross section from the library. So I choose here new section. Geometry B is 1000 millimeter, H 200 millimeter. And then I click on OK. Then I create my steel cross section. This is also included in the section library. So I create here a new section, open the section library, open here the I beams. And here I look for an HEB 400 and material for this cross section should be S235. I choose the center of the top flange as the offset point and I choose here the bottom of the concrete cross section as the insertion point. Then I click on OK. I now create a load case because I want to also calculate the stresses. So new load case, I name it M. And in this load case, I define my internal forces and uh, this should be a bending moment only, MY 100 kilonewton meter. I start the calculation now and here the stresses are calculated, section properties and so on. I would also like to show you how to import the cross section into AirFem. To do this, I save the cross section first and then I open AirFem. I've already um, created a file. Um, then I have to import this uh, cross section. To do this, I go to the navigator data, sections, new section, open the cross section library, section from R section, and then I choose here this hybrid cross section. You see now um, the option hybrid is activated. I have also a tab uh, for um, this um, material assignment and I now see which material as are assigned to the cross section parts. I see here also the reference uh, material. It's also possible to define a different material here. Then I click on OK and then I can uh, use this uh, cross section. I can create a new member with this cross section. And I can use this in my static uh, analysis. With this example, I have come to the end of the training. It was taught how you can create general cross sections with graphic functions, how you can add cross section parts to database profiles and create profiles based on a DXF import. Finally, I would like to point, point out our carrier page. For this, I open here my presentation again. Um, you find a link to our carrier page in the presentation. If you are interested, please send us your application. 
I hope that the training for using our section has helped you and thank you for your attention.